Hallelujah. Well, shut it out. The devil's not getting my joy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, say it one more time. The devil is not getting my joy. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may take your seats. Good to see everybody tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, guys. Hallelujah. I'd like you to go with me, please, to Joshua chapter 14. And uh, I want us to take a look at this. Praise the Lord, because that which the Lord has promised you is going to manifest in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I won't keep you long tonight. I'm going to minister for a little bit, and then we're going to open the altar for, for a prayer and anointing of oil, and we'll go get rested, ready for celebration tomorrow morning. But these are the steps of the obedient. Praise the Lord. And uh, when I see what's going on in the world, I take heart to know that we're being led by the Spirit. And uh, it's just a phenomenal thing to be able to say with all confidence that I am actually being led by the Spirit. The things that are going on, you say, that is so braggadocious. It's not. It is my declaration that I am a son of God and I am led by the Spirit of the Lord. And if there is any deception, the Lord will reveal it to me so that I can correct and make a course correction in the name of Jesus. How many people receive that tonight so that you can make a course correction in Jesus' precious name? But I, I've been telling everybody that these are days of preparation, tremendous preparation. And I can see what the Lord is doing where he is preparing us physically and he's preparing us financially. I'd like you to, you can either speak it out or take it down. Take a note in your phone that he is preparing us. He is preparing us relationally. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you in this tonight. Uh, it, the Lord has quickened me with this here. I brought some of it uh, uh, during the week in the mountains up in New Hampshire. Um, but I'm under instruction, amen, to, to, to roll it out here and to see what the Spirit of God does with it here uh, with this group. Praise the Lord. Can I have a big amen? amen? I want you to say this, that the best has yet to come. Now, I want you to take down this scripture, Hebrews 5, verse 7. Hebrews 5, verse 7 and you will see that Jesus prayed with loud expression and tears. The tremendous workings of prevailing prayer, amen, overcoming opposing forces. Hallelujah. So you can take a look at it your own time. Hebrews 5 verse 7. Take a look at it. Amen. We're, we'll go here to Joshua 14. And this is the story of Caleb. Praise the Lord. And Caleb getting what he was promised. Even though 45 years had passed. Even though 45 years had passed, Caleb got what he was promised. Did it just land in his lap? Or did he arrive on his birthday to take it? He arose, he arrived and arose to take it. Remember, there was a promise. And this promise, I am here to collect. Hallelujah. Now, how many people know there is a promise for you to collect? Now, I believe with all my heart, this whole thing about miracles is the Lord is setting us up. I don't know all the things that are, that are going to happen between now and the rapture. If you'd have asked me, could something like COVID have happened before the rapture, I probably would have told you, I don't believe so. I believe we'll be out of here. But I have also always said this, that I don't believe that the start of the tribulation period is like a black Sharpie pen where, you know, you just have the dispensation of grace and then, and then all of a sudden the church leaves and now all hell breaks loose. I do believe that there is like a merging of times. 
why many people would accept that. And I, I believe that, that what's happening on the earth today is the Antichrist system is, is being set up and uh, is, is pushing uh, and looking for doors to work through. How many people would accept that? Looking for where it can work. Well, it can't work through me. Amen. Amen. And Thessalonians says that the church is the restraining order. You've heard all of this before, but you know what? I can't hear it enough because every day there's stuff out there that wants to drain this out of me, wants me to get my eye so focused on what's going wrong in the world that doesn't please me. You think to yourself, what, what's this? What's that? What's the other thing? Food shortages, all of these different things. If you asked me years ago, was that possible before the rapture of the church? I would say, I don't believe so. Now, with everything that's going on, I'm thinking, my faith is that it doesn't. But what am I doing about what if it does? If the power goes out for three weeks, what are we going to do? Lift your hand and say, I receive the wisdom of God. Come on, just work with me now. Just say it again. I receive the wisdom of God. Amen. So this said again, I receive. You said, well, this puts fear. No, no, this is not about fear. This is the word builds faith. What I'm doing is I'm putting us in a, what would you say, real possible scenario that what if right we're keeping the switch of faith turned on amen as the church we're the restraining order of the antichrist it's not going to be a big sharpie pan and then you know what as the church leaves it's just full on then you know have at it there's going to be stuff before that and I we know this that, uh, that the enemy is going to be working at, and we, the church, have to do our part. Now, what we can't mess with is the fulfillment of prophecy. How many people receive that? So what's the best way to pray? By the Holy Ghost. Because not everybody knows end times, theology, all events, and even people that believe they know end time events, many of them differ. Hallelujah. So really at the end of the day, what you're believing right now is the strain that you have been exposed to and what you choose to believe. That is the truth. That's what you have been exposed to, brought into, and that's what you choose scripturally. You can say, yes, that's what I believe. But there are other people just like us that scripturally the strain and everything they have been exposed to, they absolutely believe that they are right. How many people understand this? Well, God's right. <laughs> and what the Lord said to Pastor Karn all those years ago when our eldest son went to heaven in 2005 was we have to be prepared to stay and we have to be prepared to go. And I believe this is what the Lord is doing right now. He's preparing. Whatever that looks like, we receive it. We never do anything out of fear. Hallelujah. Like we're not going to run to the grocery store and buy up all the toilet rolls. Can I have a big amen? Well, it's not the wildest thing. Imagine toilet rolls. I still go tilt tilt with that. What was it with toilet rolls? <laughs> it's like toilet rolls of all things. Toilet rolls. Anyway, to toilet paper. You don't call them rolls here? No, toilet paper. Well, they're rolls. They're toilet rolls, you know. Well, you're toilet rolls, you know. No, sorry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want you to say this. While I'm sitting here listening to this, I'm receiving my miracle. <laughs> That's... I'm telling you, this is what the Lord has ministered to me. This is how this is going to roll out. This is, this is how this is going to, because you're going to be in worship just like he showed me. 
and you're going to receive your miracle. You're going to be sitting there listening to a message, and you're going to realize, I'm actually healed. Some people are going to have to take off their glasses. I'm believing that one of these days I'll be ministering to you, and my eyes will go all blurry with my glasses on, and when I take them off, amen, I'm going to have 20-20 vision. Come on. Come on, believe this. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I take it. Come on, Sid, I take it. Come on, one more time. I take it. Now, if you work with me, I'm telling you, we'll get you out of here early. So go with me to Joshua 14. You're all such a blessing turning out. <laughs> if you work with me, I'll get you out of here early. Amen. We can get away home and go to bed. Praise the Lord. So look at this in Joshua 14. This is collection day. Amen. This is collection day. I'm here to collect. Hallelujah. I'm here to collect. Praise the Lord. Anybody got a collection day? <laughs> oh, some of you are like, mm-hmm, yes, amen, yes. These are the inheritances in the land of Canaan distributed to the Israelites by Eliezer the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers' houses of their tribes. Their inheritance was by lot, as the Lord commanded Moses for the nine and one-half tribes. For Moses had given an inheritance to the two and one-half tribes beyond the Jordan. But to the Levites he gave no inheritance among them. For the people of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim, and no part was given in the land to the Levites except cities in which to live, with the pasture lands for their livestock and for their possessions. Isn't that amazing? Possessions. And the Lord commanded Moses, so the Israelites did, and they divided the land. Then the people of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jepuna, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning me and you in Kadesh Barnea. So they had a discussion. Verse 7, here we go. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to scout out the land. And I brought him a report, as it was, in my heart. Now, I want you to underline that. One, a couple of the translations, they say it in, in the mind. It's in the heart. It must be in the heart. And I brought him a report as it was in my heart. Faith is not in your mind. It's in your heart. I'm going to say it again. Faith is not in your mind. It's in your heart. But my brethren ate. I want you to take your pen and I want you to write here, company. Company. Because relationships matter. Look at this. But my brethren who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt. Yet I wholly followed the Lord, my God. Yet I holy followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, surely the land in which your feet have walked shall be an inheritance to you and your children always because you have wholly, underline this, wholly followed the Lord my God. Now look at this in verse 10. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. When you read Hebrews 5 verse 7, and you read the following verses, you will see is that Jesus could not die until he gave up his life. Satan could not take him out. I want you to declare this tonight. Satan cannot take. Oh, you got to say it like you mean it. Satan cannot take me out. It would have been Satan's delight to take him out in the garden in Gethsemane, but he couldn't because Jesus had to go all the way to the cross. Then, come on, into the parts beneath and take the keys. Satan is always trying to pervert the times. 
but he's not perverting mine. I am on time. I am right on time. And every step I take is ordained by the Lord. You say, well, Pastor, this is just all faith confession. This is better than saying I'm running around like a headless chicken. I don't know what I'm doing. No, he says, I have an unction from the Holy One, and I know all things. Come on, everybody. So say this with me. My life will not be taken from me. I'm going to live out length of days in the name of Jesus. I'm going to live out, live long and satisfied. I'm going to live, I'm going to live until I'm satisfied in the name of Jesus. Come on, just receive this right now. Just, just say this. I am not allowing disease to take me off this earth. In the name of Jesus, I am here for such a time as this. I am ordained for this time to do the will and the purpose of God. In the name of Jesus, so touch your body and command it. Come into line in the word of the Lord. Come on, in the name of Jesus, we carry the word of the Lord. There's a voice that cannot be muted. There's a voice that cannot be silent. There's a voice that cannot not be muffled. Hallelujah. So Jesus was determined, and so are we. So look at this. And now, behold, the Lord kept me alive. Underline it. Highlight it. The Lord kept me alive. The Lord kept me alive. As he said, these 45 years since the Lord spoke this word to Moses, while the Israelites wandered in the wilderness, and now, behold, I am this day 85 years old. I am this day 85 years old. Now, you've heard it. You could, you could just cruise with me right now because you've heard it so much. But I don't want you to do that. I want you to put yourself in gear. Because there's a reason he's alive. He's just not alive to be alive. There's a reason he's alive. There's a reason you're alive. There's a reason that you're on the earth for such a time as this. There's a reason that you weren't part of the start of the church 2,000 years ago. There's a reason that you're part of the consummation, the finishing, the wrap up of a dispensation. You're, you're helping to wrap it up. But in wrapping it up, the early church, they got to what? Begin to uh, uh, open things up. What are we doing? We're wrapping it up. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, we get to put the bow on the top of it. In the name of Jesus, amen, as the church is presented back. Hallelujah, bonza padasaloma, monje pala padasalama. So we're an actual gift to the world. 2,000 years on from the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord, we are here as a gift to the world. Praise the Lord, Ben Zella. And just like John the Baptist was a forerunner to Jesus, amen, now we, the church, are a forerunner to Jesus again, amen, of what is about to take place. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, I'm trying not to preach, but I feel the anointing coming on me. Come on, these are great days to be alive. We're not down here suffering. And oh my God, what are we going to do? So this gets better. We see this now. I am this day 85 years old. So I don't know whether it was his birthday and they baked him a cake and... Amen, but just, just, just say it's his birthday. This day, I am 85 years Happy birthday, Caleb. This day, I am 85 years old. Yet I am as strong today as I was the day Moses sent me. I want you to put a bold in there yet. Hallelujah. That regardless of circumstance and situation, I have a big capital Y-E-T yet. It doesn't matter how everybody else is acting at 85. This is how I'm going to act at 85. 
doesn't matter how everybody else is acting at 65. This is how I'm going to act at 65. It doesn't matter how everybody else is acting at 45. This is how I'm going to act at 45. Hallelujah. He said, as my strength, come on, everybody. As my strength was then, so is my strength now. Why? What does it say? For war. This, he, did, he wasn't kept alive so that he could just enjoy the good of the land. He was kept a, alive to take the giants out of the land. Because it tells you that he took at least three more giants out. There was perf purpose for his sticking around. So you can imagine 85, and here comes Caleb looking for his giant. I've got my land, and I, where is that giant? Because we're about to purge this piece of property clean in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So this is just not about getting what you were promised. This is about then having enough strength to work what God gives you. <laughs> we need the wisdom to work the land that God has given us. We need the wisdom to work on the other side of the inheritance of the promise. Uh, you know, like, come on. It's just not about getting what you were promised. It's about then what we do with it. Hallelujah. And it tells me here that he, his strength was the same at 85 as it was at 40. Now, if you're, if you're older a little bit and you don't feel like you feel like when you were 40, I would get moving. I would be getting myself some protein and I would get myself at least into a place of some resistance so that you can put some resistance against and strengthen your body. I don't believe for one minute that Caleb lay around 45 years on a chaise lounge eating grapes. How many people knows what a chaise lounge is? Okay, praise the Lord. I don't believe for one minute that he was hanging out at the Golden Corral. <laughs> Went quiet in this Presbyterian church. <laughs> Brahms. We always give Brahms a, a like a like a pass, you know, because it's Oklahoma cows. <laughs> like that means so, like that means something. Let's go to Brahms. It's Oklahoma cows. <laughs> like it means something. But it is delicious. So let's take a look at 11 again. You all doing okay? Shut it out. We're going to make it. Wisdom. Isaiah 11. You remember we preached that? If you go back all the things, I'm telling you, I know people think I just go around the Marley bush, you know. And, uh, you know, it's like, oh, bless him. You know, here he comes, you know, with this prophetic age, you know. And he's just throwing all these wonderful one-liners out there at us and, and all of these different things. But I'm telling you, if you go back and you stack them all and you put them all together, I'm telling you, God is painting you a very powerful picture of setting you up for success and not failure. You have, I'm telling you, you have shelves and boxes in your attics of tapes and cassettes and CDs and that you bought over the years. And, and probably we have forgotten more than what we ever heard. <sighs> you remember the days you used to take like a whole tape series and just literally work it until you heard that little funny <laughs> that it wouldn't work anymore? 
and say, no, Pastor Paul, I'm too young. Well, praise the Lord. I hope your strength is there. <laughs> Yet, I am as strong today as I was the day of Moses. Now, listen, if you've had problems with your back and you're young, and I'm telling you, it's just the lack of exercise and the lack of strengthening your muscles and the lack of doing all those different things. And I'm telling you, Satan's going to find a door to take you off your legs. Well, I want you to lift your hand and say, I will never be off my legs. So what are we going to do about it? We're going to strengthen. Hallelujah. We're going to strengthen our bodies in the name of Jesus. Now, how is it going to be? Is it going to be easy? No, you see, that's why I don't want to go. I don't want to go to Saturday nights. This was supposed to be miracles. It's what God can do for me, not what I can do for God. Hallelujah. But this is the miracle, the miracle of the change of a mindset in the name of Jesus that I can live whatever way I want and God can bail me out physically. He can bail me out financially. He can just keep bailing me out. That, that's amazing. And you know what? God is so gracious that he will do that. But that's like just saying, you know, I have God on Sunday, you know, and then you know what? I just do whatever I want on Monday. It's like I get the miracle that I need. I have the temporary reprieve. But this is my life. Look what you never say. It's my life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Say Chipotle is my life. <laughs> you all doing okay? Yes. Praise the Lord. Some of you are like, Lord Jesus, Amen. help me. I just came from a miracle. I came for the anointing of oil. Hallelujah. But you're going to go away with more. Yes. You're going away knowing that the promise is yes, and through him, amen. You know that there's a collection day coming right up. And if God did it for Caleb, he's going to do it for me, amen. I'm going to stick around long enough, amen, so that I can receive. Moses said it. Hallelujah. In verse 11, it says, so is my strength now for war and to go out and to come in. So now give me this hill country of which the Lord spoke that day for you heard then how the giant like Anakim were there and the cities were great and fortified. If the Lord will be with me, I shall drive them out just as the Lord said. Yes. Hallelujah. So he didn't get his land so that he could just have an orchard. <laughs> he got it as a testimony to the final authority of God's word that what God has promised me shall surely come to pass. How many people's got a promise? Wave at me right now. You've got a promise. Amen. How many people can also say that there's been a few things that have come against your body over the years? Things have come against Karn and myself and even our family at times. And, and I just think, my God, you know, how can that be? But I'm telling you, the Lord has preserved us. The Lord has kept us. The Lord, like David, amen, the enemy thrust sorely at me that I might fall, but in the name of the Lord, I will cut him off. Amen. What are we? Strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Come on, shut it out. I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Look at your neighbor and say, you're stuck with me. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm going nowhere soon in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because God's word is working on my behalf in the name of Jesus. Come on. I might not have seen what I'm supposed to have seen yet, but I know that my God is working behind the scenes, and I know that as I declare and decree his word, and I hold on, shut it out, I'm holding on, I'm holding on his promises in the name of Jesus, amen, I'm holding on those promises, but God, you said you would do this, you said you would do this.
this. And that's why I'm here in Tulsa. That's why I'm still here in Tulsa, because I believe in what God said about this city. I believe what God said about this state. I believe that the best is yet to come. And I don't believe that God is finished with Tulsa, Oklahoma. Are there any believers in this room? I do not believe God is finished one minute. I do not believe God is finished, amen, with Claremore and Owasso and Katusa in the name of Jesus, Sepulpa, you hear me? God is going to sweep through there. I'm telling you. You may take your seats. just facilitators we're here to play our part Caleb didn't forget his part he didn't get to play at 40 but I'm telling you he says I don't care what age it's going to be amen I'm still going to get my time amen look at you never say I'm still going to get my time amen come on so many people are looking at the clock tick tock tick talk, tick tock, like time is passing you by. And then we come in with Caleb and it looked like time was passing by, but Caleb came to collect. Amen. At 85, his strength was the same as it was at the age of 40. And he was there. I'm telling you, not so that he could just, you know, just frolic around the land, but he was there to clean it, to purge it, to take out the giants. Why? Because he only on both Solomon had this purpose and it was not just to take the land for himself but it was for the generations after him and that has been what is wrong with the church they just want it for themselves but anything that God has done is a generational move it is for the generations to come it's for our children and our grandchildren and our great grandchildren this is not about us getting the promise of God, but this is us getting an inheritance and laying it up for our children's children. And so we will always be able to say that when we left the earth, that we left Tulsa in a better state than what we found it. Every house you move into, you you're most anavanikadas. You want to be able to say by the time that you sell it and move on that you left it in the better condition than what you got it. And I don't care if you got it new. By the time someone else gets it, it will be a shining testimony to the goodness of God. Come on, let's receive this in the name of Jesus. If you're if you're having the Lord, the Lord's telling you to sow your vehicle. Well, you don't sell it until you've taken it to the shop and you've put new in on it. You put everything in it that it needs. You don't give just a, a rickety old thing off to somebody and let them fix it. Amen. The diligence and the integrity of your heart is what sets you up. Amen. For the fulfillment of God's promises on our lives. Can I have a big amen? This is how it works, guys. This is how it works. When you're in it just to take and it's for me, that's when things go squirrely. That's when things go wrong. And, and I'm telling you, you're not getting it to take out giants. But I'm telling you, there's nothing, there's nothing ahead of you that you won't have to take giants out. And you might as well just posture yourself right now to know that I'm in this to take the giants out. Hallelujah, I'm gonna say it again, I'm in it to take the giants out. 
Hallelujah. I'm in it. I'm telling you, even if my children do not understand it, I can take the giants out of the way. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord, because what I have to fight, they should never have to fight. I can get the victory. Amen. I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus, come on. How many people believe there's an inheritance, amen, that, that is being laid up right now? And I know that what you've been working on naturally, but there's more. There's a supernatural. There's a supernatural inheritance that God wants each and every one of us to have. Amen. Physically, emotionally, relationally, in the name of Jesus. Come on. is reigning come on as kings in this life come on when David came to the battlefront and he came at the father's behest take the cheese and the bread to your brothers and when David approached the battle line and he heard and he says what's going on and he was told this dirty giant comes out morning and night and torments us. Comes out morning and night and torments us. And David says, why are you letting this happen? And his brothers were so disgusted at him. He said, they said, David, shut up. But it was too late because what David said had already been heard by tail burrs. And they had already went to the king and said, there's a young man. And he says he can take out Goliath. And he says, well, by all means, bring him. Bring him. And David and the king had a conversation. And the king says, you know what? You're not going out there without having armor. Here, take my armor. You know, I was enough Irish, I'd have turned around to him and said, listen, if your armor worked that well, why aren't you out there? <laughs> Just still too much Irish in me. If it worked that good for you, why haven't you already sorted it? But I'll tell you what, Mr. King, this is what we're gonna do. You've heard I've taken out lions and I've taken out bears. And if you just let me do what I do, You see, the world doesn't want you to do what you do. They want you to do what they do. And in the church, they want you to do what they do. They don't want, they don't want Davids. They, they, don't, want, they don't want people rising up that do things unorthodox. Business, anything, just, just do it the way I tell you. No, I can't do it like that. But I'll tell you what way I can do it. I have a sling and I see that there's a lovely little brook down here and uh, I'm used to this believe it or not I'm used to this and uh, I'll tell you what I'll do I'll go down there and I'll get myself some smooth stones not just any old stones well worked with stones that have been well worked for years that all the roughness of them have been smoothed off he says, I'll pick them up. I'll put them in my pouch. And I'll take out the giant. Now you've heard this. You've heard me preach this how many times? But David did it. Now he didn't run out after everybody that was there. His eye was on the one. This is trouble with the church. We try to take it all out. But God is a strategist. He always has a strategy. That if you take out the kingpin, 
the fight's over. All you have to do is just go and clean it up. Wave at me if you understand this tonight. That's the truth. So David, he gets the go-ahead. He goes down to the brook and he pulls out the perfect stones. And what does he do? He puts them in his pouch and he has a sling in his hand and he's ready to go. So this is years and years and years ago. The Lord showed me how clearly this works with how our words are so key to taking out the giants in our lives. How he took well these stones that have been well worked by the water. The water of the washing of the word. He didn't pick just any old five stones. He took the right stones. He put them in his pouch. He put them in his heart. This is what we do. Amen. What did he do? He picked one out as he was running. The sling is going. What is he doing? It's the same with us. We take the word from our heart. We put it into our sling, which is our tongue. And you never, you never run at the devil with your mouth closed. You never go to take out the devil or a giant with your mouth closed. And so you have the perfect parallels. But look at your neighbor and say, would you just let me do it my way? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Instead of always trying to make me like this and that and the other, just let me do it my way. David ran swiftly. Sling was flying. The perfect stone hit him where it needed to hit. Was he the greatest shot? I don't know. I believe he had supernatural help. How do I know that? Well, even in the time where he inquired of the Lord to take out the enemy, the Lord told him not to do it the same way as he did it the last time. And he said, this time, when you hear the rustling of the leaves of the mulberry trees, then you'll know to come up and around. Well, all the, 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 the wonderful people, the scribes and everybody that study will tell you that that could possibly have been the armies of the Lord, the angel armies, that what wasn't just the natural blowing of the leaves, it actually was the sound of the intervention of the armies of the Lord. So was it the same with this little stone? Well, I'm telling you, when I'm working with the Lord and I'm making my confession with well-worked words coming out of the river, coming out of the spirit, something spiritual has taken place, something supernatural, something angelic of a help is helping me stay on track. Hallelujah. Shut it out, I'm going to make it. Hallelujah. And this is where I believe it's at. I believe there's giants to take out, but you need to know what one to take out. You're not to be working at everything. There are certain things and certain people to take out things that, that free up regions, free up uh, families, different things like that. I believe all of this. And I believe there's something on the church in this day and hour to do what only the church can do. And we need the miracles. Because once you start to work in miracles and start to sense the workings of the spirit and, and the supernatural, things will change in your life. It will just not always just be by faith. Amen. It will be the tangible anointing that you will abom Salaman Broston di Frikada so pray with me right now. Main Jombo Shale Ven Taraka Soloto from Ije. Main Jola Man Jola Papra Padasan Zora Padasan Zirostoi. Main Jola Papra Padasan Zola Papalani Kifalani. Main Jola Pom Broston Zarba Doshale Brahmana Soloto from Mina. We're going to work in this tangible Don Vinaya. This tangible anointing in the name of Jesus, even on the Senate floor, in the name of Jesus, working on 
under these strong, heavy anointings in the name of Jesus, workings, anointings that come to work, anointings that come to help us pray, anointings that come to help us do what needs to be done at the time that it needs to be done. Come on, any believers, that's why physically something's happening. That's why financially something's happening in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, we give him glory, I will praise and magnify his name. Hallelujah. Glory. So Father, our Pastor, how does this all, you know, how does this relate to me? In the most beautiful, simplest way. That you follow the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. That you meditate, Joshua 1, upon his word night and day. That even if you feel like you're doing nothing and you've been forgotten about, one of these days, because you've stayed ready and you've wholly followed the Lord. You've stayed ready and you've wholly followed the Lord. You have stayed ready and you have wholly followed the Lord while you thought that you were forgotten about and everybody else got to do and you're thinking, what am I? You know what? I mean, the grease from the pan, what am I? just arrive with a little bit of cheese and a little bit of bread. I'm just here to feed the troops. But what's going on? Tell me what is going on. Well, every morning, every night, this guy has come out and he has tormented us to the place that we're all full of fear. And that is exactly what these spirits want right now. They want by every anchor man, every newscast, sitting listening to Fox and ABC and MSN, all of them, CNN. If what you're listening to is not filling your heart full of faith, then don't listen to it. And if you can't handle what you're hearing, then switch it off. Because Satan wants to do exactly what Goliath did to torment the people of God. It's never going to happen. You're going to be starved. You're going to freeze to death with no electricity. You're going to this, you're going to that. No, no, Father. There is wisdom. Lift your hands and receive it right now. There is wisdom. There is wisdom. I'm not talking about the, the dried bucket of powder beneath your stairwell. There's wisdom. What is it? Manzola Prapadaskanaya. That if you meditate upon my word night and day, then you will have good success. Hallelujah. There's promises that we will eat the good of the land. Come on, even in Psalms today, I send out a text and it was, I will not faint and I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Hallelujah, I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And if God could make an angel cake in the Old Testament, he can make me an angel cake in the New Testament. I am his child. I am his andofranzias to lovamrana in jolabambrastanaya. And if he had to send birds to feed them in the name of Jesus, come on. He'll never see the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. But what am I listening to? Am I listening? Am I hearing what the Lord is saying? Because he's speaking. Do this, Paul. Do this, Paul. Do this, Johnny. Do this, Peter. Do this, Sally. Do this, Betty. Do this. Do this. Do this. Get ready for the do this. Come on, everybody. Get ready for the do this. I don't, I mean, that's crazy. Don't be thinking it's crazy for one minute just because somebody else is not doing it. Noah 
Noah built an ark and nobody else was doing it. Nobody had said, non Dophaniah, nobody had saw rain. And he was the crazy man building a boat. But let me tell you, when the rains began to fall, he wasn't so crazy after all. I'm telling you, these are days to prepare. Prepare to stay and prepare to go. And no matter what happens between now and the rapture, it's all good for the church. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. He's for us. He's not against us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. In the name of Jesus, when the blessing of the Lord is upon us, it makes heaven look amazing and people will see the goodness of God, the glory of God upon us because the Hebrew word is kabod, that we will be weighed down with the goodness of heaven. If you believe it, give the Lord a shout right now. they say the first miracle was the water we're going home was the water being turned into wine but you know what you can back up to the day of Pentecost there was the miracle of the ear the hearing of the ear that people heard the gospel in their own language not necessarily was their language being spoken but the miracle was that they heard as they understood it in their own dialect. Isn't that amazing? Do you know that in this service tonight, each and every one of us could have heard something completely different because of the miracle that's just right inside your ear because he will direct and lead and guide in the name of Jesus. Pray on the Spirit with me just a couple of minutes right now. Come on. We're going home. To everyone watching online, is it this camera here, guys? Hallelujah. To you that are at home right now, wherever you are, I know it's a busy weekend here in Oklahoma. I'm telling you, people are ready back to school. People are going back to school. One part of the city's back. Another part of the city's going back. And usually this time in August, our minds are turned towards universities, colleges, amen, schooling, amen, getting the family up and running again, amen. But I'm telling you, no matter what's going on in our world, amen, I'm telling you what's on God's heart right now is miracles in Jesus' precious name. And I'm addressing you right now, wherever you are, to believe, to stand and agree in the name of Jesus, to lift up holy hands to heaven and receive what it is that God has for you right there, amen, right where you are in Jesus precious name whether you're in the United States or some other country in the world amen God has a plan amen we're going to follow him it may not look like it's the same as everybody else's it may look completely unorthodox but I'm telling you God knows what he's doing God knows what he's doing even when God showed up to Gideon everybody remember that one when God showed up to Gideon he's just you know working in the wine press and Gideon told God you got the wrong guy but I tell you God didn't get the wrong guy. He got the right person. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on. God is moving and we're moving with him in the name of Jesus. That's why you never need to be ambitious with God. Amen. Because God has marked you for specific works and for specific tasks in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we are not going to miss it. Caleb didn't miss it. And Paul Brady's not going to miss it. I want you to shout it out. I'm not going to miss it either. In Jesus name. Amen. There's a day coming soon where you know and you will have the conviction within you that you know that this is my day. This is my collection day. There will be a boldness. There will be an aggression. There will be a spirit of faith that will rise up within you. And you are here to take it. You are here to lay hold of it. And you are here to receive it as a manifestation. Come on, any believers in this room, come on. We're here to take it. Shut it up. We're here to take it. You know, I listen to the, all the people that get on election trails and they're out there telling everybody what they're going to do. But you know, in the intelligence world, you would never tell anybody what you were going to do. So it amuses me. <laughs> you're telling the enemy everything you're going to do. <laughs> and that's why I tell people, 
pray in tongues. <sighs> pray in tongues. You've got a direct line. And Satan cannot understand. He cannot. He cannot break into it. It's code. And Satan can't break it. And that's why he hates it. That's why he's fought it all these years. Because he can't deal with it. He doesn't know what you and God are talking about. Until then you go. You know, Satan doesn't even know the dream that you had from God until you start telling your friends about it. There's workings and dealings with God that happens to us that should never, ever be discussed, talked about to any other living being because there are spirits that will immediately go to work to stop it coming to pass. Satan went to great lengths to find out, was this him? If you are the son of God. He so desperately wanted to know. And as Christians, we just tell everybody everything. Uh, election rallies, we tell everybody everything. We tell the enemy what we're going to do. We just, we just tell everybody everything. But in the intelligence world, <laughs> it's only the people that need to know, that get to know. And they're held to a tremendous responsibility and accountability for that. Hallelujah. Did you get anything out of this tonight? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those three people, we're going to have an amazing move of God together. Hallelujah.